Hi, my name is Cecilia. I'm very happy to be here. I'd like to talk about importing C, C++, and Object C libraries into Swift uh, projects. Uh, the reason why I decided to talk about this is because in my day-to-day -day work, I deal with a pretty big application called Spotify. The source code includes C, C++, Object C, and Swift. Back in the day when there were no Swift, C and C++ were wrapped into Object C to be used in the Spotify application. Today we're writing Swift on top of the current application. It made me wonder if the current setup is still the best. To answer this, let's take a look at the connections among these four languages. Story time. Let's start with C. In 1972, C first appeared. It became popular among cross-platform applications and embedded systems. Developers soon discovered that C does not have support for classes and objects. 13 years later, a Danish computer scientist, Bjarne Sjöstrup, invented C++, which is an extension of C and adds the support of the object-oriented programming. Since C++ is a superset of C, it means that all C code can be run in C++ compiler. Object C was invented around the same time as C++, but wasn't picked up by Apple until 1996. Object C is a thin layer atop C, and its object syntax is derived from another programming language, um, Smalltalk. Similar to C++, all C code can be compiled by the Object C compiler. In order to be able to compile the source files that contains a combination of C++ and Object C, a language variant called Object C++ was used. You might have seen them in Xcode, and can I get a hands up on who has seen .mm files in Xcode? I think plenty of you have seen them, thank you. And Swift came in 2014. The language is built to work with Cocoa and a large body of existing Object C code. It also uses Object C runtime library, which allows C, C++, Object C, and a Swift code to be run within one program. Swift has direct interoperability with C. So what does this all mean? It means that Swift can talk to C directly, but Swift can't talk to C++ and need some manual middle stage. The connections among those four languages brought me to the topic I would like to talk about. So actually, how do we import them and use them in Swift applications? An application, in my opinion, is like a piece of art. I compare it with Ikebana, a Japanese art of flower arrangement. First, we decide uh, what the flower arrangement is going to look like. Then we go to the field to find some suitable branches and flowers. When we find a suitable one, we, we add it to the entire arrangement, trim it, arrange it, and refine it. When creating a new application, we're making a new piece of art. We decide the goals of the application, find some libraries that will serve the goal. In my case, the goal is the presentation, and the branches I would like to add are C, C++, and Objective-C. After adding them, we notice that some things aren't entirely smooth and beautiful, some functions went missing, some conversions are difficult to deal with, it's time to fix them. The art of refinement in in practice, is to write a wrapper to the library. After adding the dependencies and wrapping the APIs, the libraries are probably <coughs> set up. It's time to take a step back and appreciate the beauty by recapping the process. We will start by adding an Object-C framework into Swift project. To demonstrate, I have created an example framework called Vanilla Object-C with one function, random string. Most of the time, if we're dealing with third parties, we have access to either an entire project or a framework. The setup is quite similar. For the purpose of the demonstration, I will try to avoid using dependency management tools like CocoaPods so that we can focus on the original setup. Now, in the Swift project, drag in the vanilla object project or the framework. Link the framework by going to the build settings and add 
vanilla object see that framework. Now go to Swift class, import vanilla object C module, create an instance of the object C class, I call it vanilla instance, and then call the function random string inside that class. All done and easy PC. This part a lot of you may already have done, so let's continue with something <coughs> more exciting. Setting up C++ dependencies in Swift project. I have created another demo library called basic CPP lib with the same function random string. As we may recall, C++ cannot talk to Swift directly and needs some manual middle stage. For example, object C. So let's create an object C framework that includes basic CPP lib. And I call the framework simple CPP wrapper. And in the linked frameworks and the libraries, add lib basic CPP lib .a. And it's all set for the framework. To start with, rename the wrapper file from .m to .mm. This way enable us to compile both C++ and Objective-C. Implement the Object-C function random string that calls the C++ function. The code gets a little bit complicated. I will explain this later. After all this is done, we link the Object-C framework into the Swift project, just as we saw before. Import the module and call the Object-C function, and we are done. <coughs> The last one is either a piece of cake or can be even more complicated, setting up CLib in Swift. So let's see. C library is often compiled as a static lib. So I create the last demo project called pure C, and it has again only one function random string. Go to the Swift project, link lib pure C dot A, compare to frameworks, the libraries do not contain interfaces. And a Swift project that doesn't read header files automatically neither. So we have a problem here. Swift cannot see the C headers. Swift though imports modules and modules can specify the headers. So let's define our own module then. In fact, to create an own module in Swift is quite simple. Go to Swift project, create a folder and the name of the folder will be the name of the module. Mine is called C wrapper. Inside of that folder, create a file called module.module map. The syntax starts with module space my module name, and in the curly brackets, add header and specify the C header pass. Export star would make everything that is included by the submodule be automatically re exported. Now in the build settings, let's point the Swift include path to the module map directory. Access the module by importing it. Voila, C code is usable in Swift. Isn't that amazing? Now we have successfully set up dependencies for C, C++, and object C. Does it mean that we can start to use them directly into Swift applications then? Well, yes and no, because Object C translates well to Swift, so we don't need to do much there. C++, however, doesn't translate at all, as we saw earlier. In between, we have C that we can work with without additional code, but the interfaces generated on the Swift side isn't always super developer friendly, and we sometimes it requires a few lines that we might don't want to repeat a lot. To make the interfaces Swift friendly and to abstract some underlying details away, that's what exactly what wrapper is for. So let's start with the easy one. As Swift is built to support a large amount of existing object C code, there's no particular need to create a wrapper for it. If we're dealing with really old object C frameworks, we might want to use NS Swift names to convert some classes and function names to be more Swift-like, as we've seen in this example. <coughs> C, however, is another story. C, in C, we have something called pointers. Those are just variables, but 
instead of holding the actual value of something, it points to the location of the stored value. In this example, we have a function random string that returns something that points to the memory address of the first char in the string. In Swift, the char pointer becomes unsafe mutable pointer int 8. Swift regards the pointer unsafe because it doesn't know how the C library manages the memories that the returned pointer references. Int 8 is the Swift equivalent of char. Swift string type has a convenient method that converts unsafe pointer u int 8 to Swift string. So the code would look like this when we write a Swift wrapper for the random string. We first store the return pointer from C as a variable and pass it to the string init method. Is it done though? Not really, because the code is not entirely correct. With pointers comes manual memory management. The random string function requires us to free the returned pointer. In C, when we create a char pointer, we are actually allocating a certain amount of memory. The random string function requires us to deallocate the memory. Swift has a convenient method to free and save pointer into it. So we call variable.deallocate. Now I'm pretty happy with, application, with this implementation. Another tiny detail here is that int size from C is converted into int32 in Swift. It's just because Swift is more explicit about int sizes. What we need to do here is to typecast it from int to int32 when passing it to C. A function pointer in C is a pointer to a function. It is similar to blocks. The syntax can look like this. Here is a function pointer called get next value. It points to a function that takes an int ball and returns an int ball. A function pointer can be sent in as a parameter in a C function. Here I have a function foo that takes a start value and a function pointer. The function will be translated by the Swift, uh, Swift compiler. The C function pointer is now a Swift closure with C function pointer calling convention <laughs> denotated by the at, at convention C attribute. I create a Swift wrapper function that takes a start value and a, and a, closure, and a Swift closure. Inside it, I call the C function which returns an int. So pretty straightforward, eh? I sent my Swift closure to the CFoo function and it should return an int value to me. But no, this will throw an error. It cannot convert the value of closure type. Swift closure takes an int and returns an int, while the C function pointer takes an int 32 and returns an int 32. So let's typecast the closure. Now I, create, now I create an inner function, local closure, that takes int 32 and returns int 32. And in the curly bracket, it typecasts the input and the output value type. If I send the local closure to the C function foo, what happens now? It throws me another error. Uh, a C function pointer cannot be formed from a local function that captures context. So what does this mean? Well, it's, really, it's a little bit complicated to explain, but the context in this case is a collection of all the variables that are available in the current scope. In a closure or local function in Swift, the con it can capture values from the outer scope. And by capturing context, the compiler means that when we use get next value, which is defined in the outer scope and used in the inner scope, it will be captured and kept alive when the inner function is finally called. Because Swift can't know 
for how long the C function needs to hold on to the closure sent to it, it cannot allow the captured context. So how do we not capture the context in an inner closure? We needed to control the lifetime of the get next value. And we can do that by assigning it to a global variable. When we use a global variable in the inner function, it doesn't need to capture any context anymore because the global variable is always available and the compiler is finally happy and not throwing me any errors. And last library, C++, it extends from C, so everything we have learned from C is really useful in C++. However, C++ is more advanced. So for example, instead of char pointer, C++ got its own string. A function that returns a random <coughs> string in C++ would have the return type std colon colon string. When wrapping, the C++ string will be converted into C string first, using C underscore string. And this string then takes a C string. As you can see here, C is a common ground between C++ and Objective C. C++ has classes as well. The demo class basic CPP library here has its own constructor, which takes one parameter called uh, version. To wrap this in object C, we create a wrapper class, simplecpp wrapper. In it, we create an instance variable of a pointer type, and I call it lib. When instantiating the object C object, we are also instantiating the basic CPP library class by using new. Once the object C object is deallocated, the C++ instance lib should also be deallocated manually by using delete keyword. Macro is a part of the preprocessor, a language that can be used in C, C++, and Object C files. To be able to use macro in Swift, the general principle is to convert macros into functions. Here I have a macro that returns a max value of x and y. When I, ex when I expose the macro functions, I need to manually convert them into functions and specify the type. In this case, it's int, double, and float. <coughs> We're finally done with the setups and the wrappers, and then we can start to use them in Swift applications without friction. Importing Object C framework into Swift is super easy. Importing C is also easy, but we might want to spend some time into writing a better wrapper. From C++ to Swift, uh, we have to wrap it through a third language as C++ and Swift doesn't directly communicate. If we have a goal for an application and we need to find some libraries that fit the goal, we are not limited to find Swift-only libraries. If there are existing libraries in C, C++, and Object C, we now know the trick to use them. That's all from me, and thank you for having me. Arigatou gozaimashita.